The Lord be with you. And also with you. If you're wondering why there isn't an organ, it's because our 1953 organ blower blew uh, this past week. So there is no organ this morning, but we are grateful to the Bell Choir for stepping in and helping and accompanying us, and also for Nancy Hall also uh, for playing the piano. Will you please stand and join me in our call to worship? Listen to the stories of God passed down by the faithful from age to age. Listen to the Son of God teaching us how to live, love, and serve. Listen to the voice of God proclaiming the broken world beloved. Listen and worship people of God, for God is here among us. As we come together today, let us confess our sins. Gracious God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Find in us, we pray, the pockets of resistance and patches of coldness that keep us close to your movement among us. Root them out and open us that we may be agents of your grace and channels of your love. In your name we pray. It is a joyous day when you realize that our God is a forgiving God. Friends, believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are free. Now let us pass the peace to one another by saying, peace be with you.
Well, good morning. I'm so glad you all managed to blow in this morning like the rest of us up here. And hope everything on your side of the wind is calm. I am Deanna Bourne, the current moderator of Presbyterian Women here in First Presbyterian Church of Finley. I was initially thinking that I was just going to do a minute for mission on the birthday offering, which we are receiving today. But I was given permission or kind of encouraged to expand a little on Presbyterian women. So you all might be sitting here for a while. I am going to talk about the birthday offering first to allow you the opportunity to get out your wallets and your checkbooks and find the little yellow birthday offering envelopes in your pews to be able to make a donation to this mission offering of Presbyterian women. The birthday offering was launched in 1922 as an offering to the mission um, of Presbyterian women. Women were encouraged to give one penny for each year of each year or however old they are, or a dollar if you don't want to admit how old you are. Um, today, you don't have to stick to that. We'll take whatever you'd like to give us. This year, four organizations are receiving funding through the birthday offering. One is the Disaster Response Team in Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's see if I can find the rest here. Another is an Effingham Child Development Center in Effingham, Illinois. Presbyterian Homes and Services of Kentucky, which is a Good Shepherd Community Nursing Center in Phelps, Kentucky and Wings of Refuge, a restoration home in Iowa Falls, Iowa. Um, I, rather than standing here giving you all these descriptions, there is a posting on the Presbyterian bulletin board in the hallway to let you know what those are all about. The amount that is received by the different agencies depends on the, how generous we are in our giving at this time. So I encourage you, of course, to give generously. Now moving right along, I started to go online and download and download and download and was coming up with pages and pages and went, okay, I should have taken Jessie up on her offering of the sermon spot, but it's too late for that. Then <laughs> I discovered there's enough historical information about PW in our own little Presbyterian Women Handbook or Yearbook in this church. It starts out with the Presbyterian Women pur Purpose, which is our guideline for what we do and who we are. Forgiven and freed by God in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to nurture, nurture our faith through prayer and Bible study, to support the mission of the world, the church worldwide, to work for justice and peace, and to build an inclusive, caring community of women that strengthens the Presbyterian Church USA and witnesses to the promise of God's kingdom. The Presbyterian women's symbol is an outline with a central figure which forms a cross that represents the Presbyterian women and crafted in Christ's power by the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm not gonna go into further detail on that. If you are interested, see me. I'm around. Presbyterian Women is a church-wide organization whose membership is open to all women. Look around you ladies. Every woman sitting in this sanctuary is a Presbyterian woman. You may not be part of what we call an organized circle or an organized group, but every woman in the Presbyterian Church is a Presbyterian woman. Presbyterian women members are those who choose to participate in or be supportive of Presbyterian women in any way. PW intentionally seeks the membership of women from all racial ethnic groups so that the organization may reflect a vision of the whole church as a community of mutual interdependence in which diversely contributes to wholeness. Presbyterian women give strong support to the mission of the denomination and determines its own leadership program and budget. And I have been told time and time again, if it were not for the women of the Presbyterian Church, there would not be a Presbyterian mission agency. 
We also put out our own publication called a Horizons Magazine. It's the official publication of Presbyterian Women and is printed bi-monthly. You can also get it digitally online now. It is the primary resource for PW and used for programming information and inspiration. All sorts of information pertaining to Presbyterian women, our mission, our work that we do. Annually, along with the Horizons magazine, comes a Bible study. Not all, but most of the groups in Presbyterian women use these Bible studies annually. There is a Presbyterian Women Task Force that chooses the subject and then a different team that chooses the writer. This is the one that we happen to be using this year, God's Promise, I Am With You. A lot of us are saying this is one of the best ones that they've come up with yet, but we say that every year. So, you know, they just keep getting better. Not only are we part of this church and this congregation, we are also part of the Maumee Valley Presbytery Presbyterian Women, which is a presbytery-wide group. We try to have two gatherings a year, one in the spring, one in the fall, to bring all of the women from all over the presbytery together for fellowship and worship and study. Beyond that, while I happen to be moderator of Maumee Valley Presbyterian Women, too, you know, imagine that. Um, beyond that is the Synod of the Covenant Presbyterian Women, which also brings together annually women from all throughout the presbyteries together for a gathering, the same sort of thing. Fellowship, faith, time together. Beyond that is the churchwide. Every three years there is a churchwide gathering of women from all over the world. This past August was one which I was fortunate enough to attend. Um, there were over 1,700 women from around the world in Louisville, Kentucky, who came together to fellowship, to pray. We had workshops, just an awesome, awesome time together. So we are not just locally, we are nationally, we are internationally, and we are strong. We are strong. So don't forget to get your checkbooks out and put something in those envelopes, and I think I'll be done for now. Thank you. Just to be clear, I did not go through the pulpit. I will now invite um, the Figlewitzes up and little Carly Ann, who is very aware of what's going to happen. <laughs> and Amy Orr as well. I had a colleague who always told me that if a baby didn't cry at their baptism, they weren't aware of the fact of what really was happening to them. Yeah. Friends, hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God calls. In baptism, God claims us, God seals us to show us that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. And by this water and the power of the Spirit among us this day, we are made members of the church, of the body of Christ, joined in Christ's ministry of love and peace and of justice. Let us remember our own baptisms this day with joy as we celebrate the sacraments. So Nicole and Eric, do you desire that Carly be baptized? I ask that you show your intentions by answering these questions. Do you renounce the ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? 
Do you trust in the love and grace of Jesus Christ? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Our Lord Jesus Christ ordered us to teach those who are baptized. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Carly by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's Church? If so, answer, we do. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism, for in it we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it we are raised to share in his resurrection, and through it we are born, reborn by the power of the Spirit. We ask that your Spirit move across these waters, that it would be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sins of those who are cleansed by it, and raise them to new life. Graft them to the body of Christ in whose name we pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Carly that she may follow you. Strengthen her to ser serve you with joy until the day that you make all things new. Amen. Amen. Hi, sweet girl. Carly child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, see what amazing love that God has for each of us, that we would be called children of God. Will you please join me in singing the hymn that is in your bulletin? Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life, you have called each of us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray for your child, Carly, this day. Watch over her. Guide her as she grows in faith. Give her understanding and a quick concern for neighbors. Daily increase your Holy Spirit more and more until that final day. Through our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. We are pleased to welcome Carly into the covenant community. God has made her a member of the household of God. Let us welcome her together as it is printed in our bulletin. With joy and thanksgiving, we now welcome you into Christ's church, where we are all one in Christ. And we also have a gift for you 
to read and, and give to Carly as she grows older. And I want to read you um, one page from this book. Now, Carly, this day, everyone knows that you are a child of God. God promises to always, always love you. And we do too. Thanks be to God. I think she's comforted now that she's part of God's family, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely. You may sit down. Children, will you join me up here in the front? I am so sorry. I forgot to call you all up here. Can you hold her a sec, Nicole, so these kids can see her? This is your newest sister. Hmm. Now, how can she be your sister? Yes? You forgot? Huh. H how do you know, Roman? How do you know that she's your sister? Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. She is your sister in Christ, right? Because this is the family of God. And this water is what is our welcome into God's family, where we remember what God has done for each of us in Jesus, right? So I want you to say hello to your new sister in Christ. Do you promise to care for her and love her and teach her about Jesus as she grows up? Mm -hmm. Will you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you say we do? All right, thank you. Why don't you take a dip in the water to remember how you are a part of the family of God this day as well. You want me to lift you up a little bit, kiddo? All right. And we've introduced a new thing in the bulletin um, where as our children go, we will be singing Go Now in Peace, that as they leave, they may embrace God's peace and God's peace will stay with us here. So will you please join us in singing as they leave. Let us pray. Lord God, you have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our eyes to see it, our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, our hands to serve it. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 37, verses 1 through 10, and 39 and 40. Do not fret because of the wicked, do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The word of the Lord.
Our second reading today is from Genesis 45, verses 3 through 11, as well as 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord.
Amen. <laughs> Thank you, choir. So I have a little warning this morning as we read this next text. Anyone who came here this morning thinking they were going to get a little church light, you better fasten your seatbelts. Because we're about to read a text that I think is probably one of the most difficult pieces of the gospel to hear and to embrace. So I invite you to perhaps close your eyes this morning or open your Bible, follow along. Let us quietly and inwardly welcome the impossibilities of living the gospel in our day. Let us hear God's word. Luke 6, starting at verse 27. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love your enemies. Give to anyone who begs from you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Lend and expect nothing in return. Extend mercy, just like God. Extend mercy. Be like God, merciful, loving, forgiving. Live the impossible. Be a Christian. Most of the time, I try not to think about texts like these because they require so much. Or rather, it makes seem following Jesus impossible, unattainable. There are also the texts where when you preach, people seem to be a little bit more reactive to what you're saying because the text beckons that we engage in issues that are hard for us to talk about, especially given our cultural and political climate. A number of years back, ordinances to criminalize panhandling ran rampant through our country. 
I don't know if there was an increase in panhandling, the persistence of those doing so, or people just in general getting uncomfortable, or it was the main reason given for establishing them. It negatively impacts tourism. I don't know if Finley has one of these such ordinances. They're pretty common these days. When I lived in England as a college student, we realized pretty quickly that the young people who were dirty and sitting on corners were not asking for money because they were hungry and wanted to get something to eat or even get shelter. Rather, it was to feed their heroin habits. And yet Jesus says to us here, give to anyone who begs from you. But how do we give? Do we give what they ask for? Do we give a gift card for $5 that we carry around just for times like these? Do we offer to take them to lunch? Or do we simply dig into the wallet and give some cash? Be like God. Merciful, loving, forgiving, live the impossible, be a Christian. Anyone who has gone through a divorce or broken a relationship with someone they love knows what a painful thing it is. Whether it's a parent for whom you were never good enough, the spouse who quit paying attention and found happiness elsewhere, or the child you could never parent in a way that could change their destructive behavior. This text is grueling to approach. Where pain abounds, forgiveness and being kind to those who hate you really seems out of the question. Daunting, Staggering and for some even repulsive. When wounds are fresh, we can't even approach texts like this. And I think God and God's mercy understands that. But there always is and will come a time when our faithfulness to God demands that we enter this realm of God's way. That requires we do the hard work of forgiveness of extending mercy, of doing good, of giving, of blessing those who have cursed us. And this doesn't necessarily mean get along or even be around each other. We almost must be sure as well that we remain physically safe, in particular if this was a problem in the relationship before. Most of this work has nothing to do, really, with the other person, anyway, but with your own pain and resistance to love in your own heart that prevents you from forgiving. Be like God. Merciful. Loving. Forgiving. Live the impossible. Be a Christian. I've spent the past week following a lot of friends on Facebook for United Methodist Clergy. Their denomination has a general conference this week, similar to our General Assembly that we have as Presbyterians, where they are specifically to make decisions about ordination of those who are in same-sex marriages, as well as theological declarations about same-sex relationships in general. There's been a lot of judgment camps form, enemies made, and in the middle of it, my brothers and sisters hear the voice of Jesus calling them to a third way, the way of God and Christ, the way of God's kingdom. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. It is my prayer that they would find comfort in living into the very breath of God this week. Be like God, merciful, loving, forgiving. Live the impossible. Be a Christian. Stern though the call might be, 
one commentator wrote, greater still is the promise. We are blessed and become children of God. By implication, the call holds an even more startling hope. By lending, by loving, by giving, by forgiving, by showing mercy, by doing all of these things, he writes, we enter into the very life of God. When we live in this manner, we embody the very life of God. And thereby the light of the gospel in the world, when we embrace the call to live the way of forgiveness, of turning the other cheek, of kindness. It's how we share the light, by living what we thought would be impossible. Through God's mercy toward us, we are able to embrace that impossibility and, even more impossible, offer it to others, making the life and the presence of God a reality in our world. So what's at stake is not only the ability to experience life as God desires it for you and for me, but it's also the ability of others to see the very presence and power of God and God's will and God's way in the world. Nobody ever said this journey of faith in a ragingly consumeristic and an individualistic culture would be easy. Understatement of the year, right? It's anything but easy. And yet God still invites us to journey through it. Why? Because with God, love is possible. With God, the impossible exists. With God, we can journey through the pain and the very impossibility of grace and mercy and love and generosity is found. in you and in me, in doing the hard work of discipleship, of sacrificing what we think we need in order that others may know mercy, kindness, and love, that we might live into the very life of God. Now is the time for us to do some training for our world is in great need of belief in the impossible, of forgiveness, of love, and of mercy, in great need of God. May we here in this community be able to witness to one another first, and then to the world that the life of God is real and palpable through the ways that we love one another. Bless and not curse, Lend without expectations of anything in return and expect that God's presence will be made known and we can survive and perhaps even thrive in a world where love rules. Forgiveness is our theme song and where God alone does the judging. May it be so. Be like God, merciful, loving, forgiving. <coughs> Live the impossible. Be a Christian.
When we receive the offering, we are given the opportunity out of our gratitude to God for the furtherment of God's kingdom in this place and around the world. So I invite you this morning to give, to give of your labor and to give of your love for our God. gifts, signs of your goodness and mercy. Receive them with our gratitude that through us all people may know the riches of your love in the word made flesh. Amen. Friends, as we come to pray, it is our custom that we share the joys and the concerns of our community of faith. And I wanted to uh, bring a few of those to you this day. We ask for continued prayers for Mary Ann Carzu, wife of former pastor Dean Carzu, who suffered a pretty massive stroke a few weeks ago 
uh, but she continues to make progress. And so Dean gives thanks to God and thanks to all of you for um, your prayers for her. Um, they are still in North Carolina, and uh, if you would care to send a card, uh, we have that address in the office. We ask for prayers for the Anderson and Needler families as they lost a mother-in-law, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother, Mabel Cheek, this past week. A long-time member of this church, a memorial service will be held on Saturday. The time to be determined is uh, yet to be known, but it will be here at the church. Mabel was 97 years old. We give thanks to God for her life. We also ask for prayers uh, be offered for member Terry Herning, uh, who was hospitalized this past week uh, for emergency gallbladder surgery and pancreatitis. Um, her recovery um, is a little bit daunting, so we ask for prayers uh, for her and for Lee um, as she begins the road to recovery. She is doing well up and walking around the hospital, but um, has a road ahead of her. So we ask for your prayers and love uh, to both of them. Are there joys and concerns that you have that you would like to offer to God this day? Yes. Well, Dave asks for prayers for those who live in Columbus, Mississippi, who had a pretty awful tornado um, come through town um, and took pretty much everything out. So we ask for prayers for them. His daughter uh, lived there a year ago and still has friends there. So prayers for them. Diana? Great. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Belinda King is the financial uh, secretary at the Presbytery office for our Presbytery, and she's been, had some pretty major health concerns, but um, after surgery um, is recovering and hopes to return back to we work this week. So we give thanks to God for that. Yeah. The joy of yesterday was that we were not thankful for the Lord. Yes. Yes. Uh, Susie gives thanks to God for uh, cabin fever, which was held here yesterday. We had uh, around 50 kids. And this mama gives thanks to God for that because my kids went to bed at 8 o'clock and were out last <laughs> night. Um, so the cabin fever and releasing all that energy was a great gift uh, to those who came. So all of, thank you to all of you who offered food or showed up to volunteer. We give thanks to God for that. Yes, amen. Um, Ellen, a former United Methodist pastor, continues to ask for prayers for the United Methodist Church and their um, journey this next week. Yeah, Susan. I think we all need to remember prayers for Joanne. Prayers for Joanne work. Um, Nothing really new, just the ongoing struggle um, of caring for Ralph, and then um, her daughter has been ill, and she lives in the Southwest. So just a lot on her plate, as well as her own uh, continued recovery from her broken um, hip leg. Um, so just continued prayers for them. It's good to see Rick Leho back. I won't point him out, but it's good to have you back in worship with us. Let us turn to God in prayer. Oh God, your cross stands before us as a light that shows us our failures as well as our hope through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for forgiving us and for coming among us to heal our pain and our resentments. We yearn for your word and praise you for your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O giver of the prayer that groans within us, teach us to pray for our enemies. Their names are many, and we whisper some of them now before you, 
in our hearts. As hard as it is to pray for those, we ask that you be with them, guard them from harm, and guide them in the way of your light. Save us all from self-righteousness and help us begin our lives anew. Heal the nations, mighty Lord, reign peace on all people, give hope to the hopeless and love to the lonely, Surprise the leaders of all nations with your joy. We pray this day for people in Syria, in Sudan, in Venezuela, North Korea, those on both sides of the border and all who are seeking asylum. God, we ask for comfort for the sick. Make the whole the broken. Make wise the foolish. Humble the powerful and make glad the hearts of those who tend our loved ones and for any who are in pain. Give them release and rest. Savior of the world, we give you thanks for your church, for the meek, the courageous, for those who teach us how to wait. Make us truly grateful for those who have paved the way and for those among us who embody the dream of God's kingdom, the impossibility of love. Trusting in the mercy of your never-failing wisdom, we commend into your hands all for whom we pray this day and pray the prayer together that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we turn to leave worship, a couple of notes about our life together. Uh, immediately following worship, uh, the adult seminar will have um, the president of the University of Finley. We invite you to join them and hear what's going on in that community as a part of our broader community. Uh, we also ask um, that you come back next week as uh, the Reverend Dr. Matt Meinke, uh, the new general presbyter of our presbytery, will be here preaching and leading the adult seminar as well. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our church and about what God is doing in our midst. Will you please stand and join me in our final hymn.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of the Spirit be with you all now and forever. And go out into the world with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.